Hey guys, Death Letter Magic here, and this is your number one source for spoilers that came out 24 hours ago. So first up, we've got Collector's Oof. I'm way too lazy to put in the Roblox Oof. And okay, yeah, there's like 10 of these in the game, but pop quiz time. What is, in modern, the number one most famous by a long shot Oof? I'll come back to it after we read the cards. So uh, this is a 2-2 two, two for 2, it's a rare, and activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. Just straight up shuts them down permanently. That will shut down entire decks. Although it doesn't stop triggered abilities, so it's a little narrow. But uh, yeah, I think this guy's going to live in some sideboards. So the other famous oof is probably number three on my modern ban wish list, Kitchen Finks. You know, they've tried to reduce combo decks. They've heavily tried to reduce infinite combo decks. Why is this one still here? And in the last, like, year or two, they've added in even more pieces. So instead of, like, oh, you need one of these two, one Kitchen Finks, and then, like, one of these. And you need all three of those permanents to light off the combo. I think right now, as it sits, it's 12-8-12. So the entire deck that isn't the mana base is just about the combo. It's ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, not that many people play that deck anymore, but, uh, also I don't care. I don't care. I want a band. It doesn't matter. By the way, Ad Nauseam and Lantern Control are the other two. So at least this doesn't assist that stupid Kitchen Fink stack. That is good. Next up, we've got Aladmarie's Call. It's a two-cost instant. Search your library for a creature card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Just straight up. So this is a reprint, but as is the norm with this set, um, it was in plain shift, so it wasn't legal in modern. But this was in Masters 25. I'm convinced that 50% of this set, if not more, was printed in Masters 25. This is so weird. Once we see all the spoilers, I'm going to count it and make a video on it, because it is astonishingly high. Boy, they are doing everything they can to make sure that the value is as low as possible for this set. Oh, hey, should we choose a bunch of cards that were just printed last year? Yeah, yeah, do it. What, what's the worst that could happen? Next up, Goblin Champion. And uh, allegedly, this is a 0-1 for 1. It has Haste. It's, of course, a Goblin. And it has Exalted. Uh, so by itself, Exalted, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1, plus 1 till end of turn. So, um, I don't know, I said by itself exalted, that's right, it's like a field ability that applies to all creatures, but usually it's an enchantment that grants it, that's at least what I'm used to seeing. So if you think it's unsafe to swing with your entire army of goblins and all of their tokens, because, I don't know, Aetherize or something, settle the wreckage, I suppose, um, you can just swing with one, and now it's almost the same thing. I mean, it's only plus one per, and your creatures are probably bigger than that, but if you got eight goblins in play, I mean, plus eight, that ain't no joke. So pretty clever card here. I don't love that it does zero by itself, but if you're swinging as part of a group and just ignoring Exalted, you probably have them boosted a little bit anyway. Next up, Kess. Hey, wait, she was on Star Trek. Anyway, uh, Kess, Dissident Mage. So that's a three-color legendary, hmm, I wonder if she's a commander, uh, human wizard, 3-4, uh, and she has flying. By the way, this is literally a reprint from Commander 2017, so yes, it, it is a commander card. I kept saying, if they want this to sell, they need fetch lands, and they need, well, I said oh, the next master set, which, I mean, okay, let's apply it to this one. They need to start putting in commander-only commanders. Because one, they've almost across the board never been reprinted, unless you count, you know, uh, anthologies, which... Nobody does. And two, they're worth a buttload of money. And also, people need them, and Commander's supposed to be, you know, a little bit cheaper and friendlier than uh, Modern. So, yeah, they really need to reprint some of these Commander front cards. And I don't mean with the deck for 40 bucks. I mean in a Master set, in a reprint set, which this pretty much is. So they managed to throw in one. And she is $7.99. It is not looking good for this set financially. This set is going to be an absolute just disaster as i've been saying all along this is going to make iconic masters look good by comparison when you look at the sales numbers the set is well designed it's interesting and it does a lot of good to the format but financially value wise ev miserable so anyway uh this hot potato right here is the three four flyer during each of your turns you may cast an incident sorcery from your graveyard and then exile it if you do cast it that way so very annoying, basically automatic, like, I'd say Torrential Gear Hulk, that's probably not right. Um, Snapcaster, I guess? Sort of? Yeah, pretty annoying to have your opponent cast all their spells twice. You need Graveyard Clearing to stop her, she's really good. 
And she has bolus colors, so that might actually help her out given the state of things right now in the last three sets that just came out. Next up, Sagomi and Angel. It's a 1-1 one, one flying white creature with uh, Vigilance. So that's just kind of neat. I mean, I think the flying lifelink bird is better because, oh, I need my 1-1 one, one flyer to be on defense. Not really, but it is an angel. You can boost those. I believe there's probably also angel death triggers. There's for sure angel ETB triggers in the game. So yeah, you can get a lot done with this. It's just a cheap angel. I haven't had a whole lot of those. And for the record, this is a brand new card. Next up, a brand new counter spell called Spell Snuff. It is a three cost, same as Cancel, got that double blue in there. Counter any target spell at all, but Fateful Hour. If you have five or less life, draw a card. I mean, that's interesting. I always thought Fateful Hour was kind of neat. I didn't think it was terrifically safe on, um, oh, what the heck was that card? They just like manually wrote it out on, even though it's a mechanic. Oh yeah, Archwell's Bloodfast. Having five or less life is not safe, like, under any circumstances in any format. I mean, two lightning bolts, you're dead. One haste creature, potentially you're dead. So unless you have, like, a lich effect out or something weird, uh, ooh, scary. But this is better than cancel. I, I think you get more out of, like, dissolve, but, uh, I don't know, whatever, sure. Next up, we got this blurry photo of a sliver. Thanks for that. Um, let's see. So this is another red sliver. It's rare. Great. Slivers you control have... Gee, I've never heard this before. Whenever this creature is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player planeswalker. Great. That is just halfway to Phyrexian Obliterator. Thanks, guys. We needed another sliver. Screw you. Next up, String of Disappearances. I know. Follow the trail. The blue trail of disappearitude. I solved it. So it's a one cost instant return target creature to its owner's hand. Not bad for one. Jeez. Then that creature's controller may pay two blue. If the player does, they may copy the spell and may choose a new target for that copy. I was going to say at one because bounces universally, their baseline is two mana. It had to have a downside and that is hilarious. But in modern, what are the odds that your opponent is able to generate two blue at any given time? Not terrifically high. I mean, hey, this is instant speed, so you could time it out perfect even if they are playing blue. This is an absolutely fantastic card. Next up, brand new cycle. It's Talisman of Conviction. Now, these are new, but the talismans are not. So we had five talismans already printed. I believe they were all in Mirrodin. And, uh, you know, what they do is add one colorless to your mana pool on tap, or you can tap, have them deal one damage to you, and then create one of two uh, colors. And these are, what are they, ally colors? I don't know. I'd have to go get a card back and I'm too lazy. So basically, like, white green has been printed, but not white red, so now they're doing white red. So these are basically just pain lands, but they're not lands. So if you play these and the lands, you're probably going to end up accidentally killing yourself just, ooh, to have the perfect mana. This will start costing you games at a certain point, which is why I don't like these. And remember, the new pain lands that draw land are even worse because they don't tap for colorless. So even these talismans are more forgiving than the new lands. The huge thing is that uh, you can tap these the turn they came out. So it's like an automatic refund of one. So these basically effectively cost one. I mean, that's really, really, really good. These are fantastic ramp. So uh, sure, I got the other ones up. We got Talisman of Creativity and Talisman of Curiosity so far, Talisman of Hierarchy and Talisman of Resilience. They're uh, all the same. They're just different color combinations. So uh, next we got whatever this says. Oh, it's Verdant Windstorm. Oh, I hope this is similar to the actual card, Windstorm. Windstorm was one of my favorite cards. Uh, let's see. This translates to uh, instant, you gain life, and then storm. Yeah, that's not even close. This is just storm trash. Screw you. It's storm and it doesn't even win the game. If you can't win the game with your storm combo, don't play storm. This card is completely pointless. I mean, unless you play it in just a normal ass deck that isn't a storm deck. And it's just, oh, I cast two boost spells and then yippee skippy, I gain nine life. I can see why they put it in the comment slot. Next up, oh, people saw this coming a mile away. A ton of you said this in my comment section or put it on uh, your wish list for the set. So some predicted it, some just wanted it. But it's Yogmoth, Thran Physician. So this is before he was, I don't know, Queen of the Borg. <laughs> I'm not that familiar with the storyline. But I am familiar enough to know that that wasn't that far off. But he did start as a physician for the Thran. And he's like, oh, my cure for everything is to remove biological parts and put in cyborg parts. And yeah, it's a slippery slope, apparently. Very slippery. 
and he slipped way the hell down it. And now, in future sets, Karn's gonna go shove the Silex straight down his throat and then detonate it. Actually, I think he's dead, but the Frexians aren't. He invented the Frexians, by the way, spoiler alert, for, for like a 20-year-old storyline. So, uh, 2-4 four for 4, double black, ouch, but protection from humans, that's hilarious considering humans is pretty heavily played. Uh, then pay 1 life, sacrifice another creature, and put a negative 1, negative 1 counter on up to 1 target creature and draw a card. Uh, the draw card is insane. The fact that you have to sack a creature slows it down. Otherwise, you'd be like, negative 10, pay 10 life, who cares? The creature is a 10-10, I don't want to get hit for 10, so let's take the 10 now. And the creature's gone. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, draw a card. I mean, that's cool. Um, in a death trigger deck, this would be insane. And then you could pay two, discard a card, and proliferate. What? Holy crap. The problem is that proliferate doesn't match anything else on the card that I can think of. I mean, I mean, yeah, it would multiply the negative one, negative one counters. So what? You have to discard a card. Good luck. When I think of proliferate, I think of plus one, plus one counters. So if you're dumping those on your black creatures or you're running black green or something... Well, then you can't really keep sacking your creatures because you just put counters on them. So I guess that really they only intended that for negative one, negative ones, unless you're just going to ignore that and run it like a proliferate deck. Because, uh, yeah, you can do that. I mean, for two, discard a card that's easier than sacking a creature. I mean, whatever. Still at four, he's a little late. Two, four, that's appropriate. Can't be bolted. I mean, he's just, he's good. He's really a good, solid card. Just like, uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Urza. Which, uh, that was him before his Planeswalker thing, too, by the way. Oh, and if you're wondering why we have so many Mythics all of a sudden, it's because uh, Mark Rosewater has revealed that we're not getting all five swords in this set. Why? I don't know. I could speculate it has something to do with draft and overpoweredness and the fact that anybody can play them because they're not color-locked. But, um, honestly, I don't know. I think they just wanted to throw these in. They ran out of spots in the Mythic spot and didn't want to drop the swords to rare. That would be my actual theory. And it looks like that is it for today. I think we got some more coming in the next couple days, so hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss it. And I will see you guys next video.